Hello, everyone. My name is Yan, and I'm a PhD student from the Computational and Systems Biology Department at the University of Pittsburgh. I'm going to give a short talk on mapping vector field of single cells. Um, <clears throat> finally, velocity is a computational technique developed by Manuel et al. Um, and was first published in 2018. The idea is to exploit the kinetics of the splicing process and the relationship between the unspliced and the spliced MRI, which can both be quantified experimentally with RNA sequencing techniques. It assumes that for cells at steady state, uh, the unspliced and the spliced MRI forms a linear relationship according to the differential equation of the spliced MRI. And the regression coefficient is the degradation constant scaled by the time scale of splicing. With the regression coefficient gamma hat, the RNA velocity is simply u, the unspliced MRI quantity, minus gamma hat s, the spliced MRI quantity. Generally, generally speaking, given a count matrix from RNA sequencing, uh, we can uniquely define the state of the cell uh, based on the expression levels of its genes. Since for each cell, we can also compute the velocity for each gene, we have a high dimensional velocity vector in the expression space, indicating the direction where the cells are evolving. Uh, what single cell RNA seq and RNA velocity provide is essentially a discrete velocity vector field. Namely, a velocity vector is attached to each one of these cells in the expression space. Uh, mathematical modelers have been using known functions derived from either uh, first principle methods or some phenomenological uh, principles to construct the vector field. We aim to learn this vector field from RNA velocity data so that we could gain some mechanistic insights which are not readily obtained using conventional data analysis methods. Uh, we used an algorithm called sparse VFC for vector field function learning. Basically, it approximates the function in the reproducing kernel Hilbert space as a sum of Gaussian kernels so that we can minimize the loss function by changing the combination coefficient C. What we get in the end is a smooth, continuous, and high-dimensional vector field function. Um, the velocity of the vector field not only provides us with continuous and smooth velocity vectors, with the continuous vector field function, we can also compute its derivatives, which is the so-called Jacobian matrix. As an example, here we have gene X and gene Y. There are two self-activating genes which mutually inhibit each other. This forms a toggle switch motif. The, their expressional rate can be modeled with an activating and inhibiting field function, plus their own degradation terms. Here is the vector field of the two-dimensional system. You can see all the velocity uh, vectors converging towards these fixed points. Here I show the realization of two Jacobians. The first one is the derivative of the velocity of gene X with respect to uh, the expression level of itself. And you can see a clear red band indicating a positive Jacobian coming from the activating uh, Hue function. The second one is the derivative of the velocity of gene Y with respect to the expression level of gene X. And the blue band amounts to an active Jacobian coming from the inhibiting Hill function. The blue and active Jacobian region in the first plot comes from the degradation terms. So by looking at the sign of the Jacobian of the vector field, we can infer the sign of regulation between genes and here is a Jacobian analysis on real data set of pancreatic endocrinogenesis. Um, it is known that NGN3 gene is a uh, inducer of the differentiation of uh, pancreatic blood cells, which would then become these endocrine progenitors. Uh, here is a 2D UMAP embedding of the data. The blue cells are the endocrine progenitors, and the orange ones are the um, pancreatic blood cells. PAX4, which acts as the effector here, 
uh, is a gene involved in the regulation of the differentiation process uh, in progenitors. Its Jacobian with respect to the regulator NGN3 is positive, uh, it's suggesting that NGN3 initiates pancreas differentiation by activating uh, PAX4. Um, the bifurcation point is where the endocrine progenitors need to take the decision to become either the beta delta progenitors or the uh, alpha progenitor. Uh, two genes, PAX4 and ARCs, uh, mutually inhibit each other and form the toggle switch motif. The Jacobian analysis indeed show that the corresponding Jacobians are negative in this region. For each cell type, we can average the Jacobians and obtain the cell type average Jacobian. Uh, then we can rank the genes based on the Jacobian values in each cell type. For example, if we look at the ranking of the top effectors, we see all these uh, signature genes showing up for each cell type. Usually you won't be able to see such results if you rank the genes based on either the velocities or the expression patterns since some other highly expressing or housekeeping genes would dominate the ranking. We have also other ranking modes like top regulators or top gene-gene interactions, but for the sake of time, I won't be uh, going over them today. The Jacobian can also be used to compute the acceleration. And we found that it is very useful uh, in revealing cell cycle related genes and highly regulated genes in progenitors. Uh, since the velocities of these genes change mostly before cells reach the stable cell types. Um, we can also compute divergence by taking the trace of the Jacobian. The divergence is actually a very informative quantity. It measures the degree of outgoingness of the vector field. An active divergence indicates either converging or decelerating vectors, and a positive divergence indicates either diverging or accelerating vectors. A divergence of zero usually indicates a steady flow. There are also cases where in some direction the flow converges while in some others it, it diverges, uh, in which case we have a saddle point and the, the divergence is simply the sum of two effects. In terms of dynamical systems, an attractor will have negative divergence and a repulsor will have positive divergence. This allows us to uh, find the source and sync cell types. Here are the divergence analysis on two experimental datasets. In the case of the pancreatic endocrinogenesis dataset, we found positive divergence at the bifurcation point here, and the strongly negative divergence at the differentiated cell types here. Uh, this makes sense because uh, bifurcation points usually have diverging uh, velocity flows, while differentiated cell types are usually things. In another data set of EMP transition, we found mesenchymal cells, which are endpoints of the transition, have predominantly negative divergence. Uh, in conclusion, we found that divergence is a good indicator for identifying endpoint cell types. So all the above analysis are implemented in our package Dynamo. Feel free to check out our GitHub page. Um, with that, I'd like to thank my advisors, Yvette Bahar and Jianhua Xing at the University of Pittsburgh, our collaborators, Jonathan Weissman and Xiao Jiechu at MIT, and the joint uh, PhD program between CMU and Pitt. I'd also like to thank the funding agencies at NIH. Thank you. All right, yeah, uh, thank you very much for this uh, very interesting talk. Uh, so audience, if you have questions, please type them into the chat box. Uh, okay, we have, uh, again, question from Zhuqi Zhang. And uh, so this is, uh, I think this has two parts. So um, Zhuqi said, great work by incorporating web field idea into RNA velocity. Uh, I think vector field uh, kind of methods will impute the velocity into the whole expression space. There is also velocity in the blank space, like uh, the space with no cells. 
May I know how you explain the velocity imputed in those blank space? Right, um, so that's a very good question. Um, <clears throat> so I think there is two parts. So one is that our, so this sparse VFC algorithm is very good at uh, interpolating um, data or velocity data uh, inside the domain that's defined by the uh, cell samples. So in those regions, that's just interpolation and uh, it, it will give us basically the smooth and continuous vector field, which allows us to compute the Jacobians and so on. Um, but for extrapolation, uh, it's, it's still, uh, I guess it's still uh, questionable because we haven't really tested uh, extensively on um, the uh, capability of extrapolation uh, of the sparse VFC algorithm. And indeed, when we do some numerical integration, we see points that basically go outside of the domain that's defined by the data. And that, that could be a problem. So I guess, yeah, so our future plan would be to impose some, something like um, a attracting vector field, uh, which basically defines the uh, domain of the vector field we learned. Yeah. Okay. Um, this yes, actually also has a second part in his question. Uh, you probably uh, have actually answered it. So uh, I think the cell, I'll just repeat the question. I, I think the cell population should only take up a small proportion of the space. Is it possible to define some boundary for the validity of the estimated uh, velocity. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so I touched a little bit on that. So mm -hmm. we tried yeah. to, yeah, to add a uh, attracting vector field, which uh, should attract the points or basically define the boundary for the vector field. Mm -hmm. Very good, so um, let me move to the next question uh, from Pablo Mayer. How would you proceed in applying Dynamo if you don't know a prior uh, the regulators or prior about the regulators or the structure of the regulation? Yeah, so also a good question. Uh, so usually when we apply uh, our uh, pipeline, we, um, so, I mean, for validation, we, of course, we need to know the uh, network or the regulators so that we can see if our results agree with experimentally um, uh, determined regulators, right? And, but for, I mean, for like the open-ended research where we don't know uh, the regulators um, uh, beforehand, then we need to, so that's why we have the ranking methods. Uh, we will basically rank the genes in a high throughput manner uh, in terms of uh, Jacobian acceleration and so on. And then you will, based on, based on those ranks, you will be able to plot um, the network of genes, gene regular, yeah, genes. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, let's do one more question. Uh, this question is from Ivan Tao from CMU. Uh, great work, thanks, Ian. Uh, I'm wondering before applying the model to iron velocity, do we have to remove the unrelated, uh, unrelated cell types? Unrelated cell types, will that affect the final results? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So. Um, so indeed, when you apply our new velocity, there is this uh, pseudo steady state assumption. And you will basically assume the cells with the most extreme expression as the cells that are at steady state. So if your cell population could bias that uh, steady state, then it, I mean, it's a good idea to remove those cells. Um, and also when you, so there is also a pr projection step in that method. So if your cell or if the your unrelated cell population is too far away from the, I guess the the main body of your data, then it's also uh, a good idea to remove those. Okay, thanks, Yan. Um, we should move to the next uh, talk.